This is something that's probably a little bit controversial, but it needs to be said. If you can save 20%, why can't you save 100? What am I getting at? Like, what am I trying to communicate here? Private mortgage insurance is a beast and no one wants to pay it. Well, you shouldn't want to pay it anyway. So you need to get that 20%. But a question that I always have to myself is if you have the discipline to save 20%, why don't you have the discipline to save 100%? Let's dive in. I'm Derek West, this is Finance Squared. You know what to do, like, subscribe, click the notification bell. I recently had a conversation with a friend of mine. Since I'm the kind of individual who's fluent in financial situations, she of course came to me to ask me what my thoughts are on it. I told her. Make sure you avoid that PMI. That PMI compounds against you. On top of the interest that you have to pay. And you don't want to do that. And of course, it'll sap your savings, so be sure to save that 20%. 20% is typically the amount of money that you need to save up to ensure that you can avoid PMI. And of course, she took my advice, more or less, and started to put together a plan to save the kind of cash to stave off PMI for the type of house that she was looking for. And obviously, when she accomplishes this, congratulations are in order. But after all the fanfare, though, one thing I'm going to ask her is, if you can save up 20, why can't you save up 100? Here's my thought process on that. You're clearly an accomplished individual. Someone who put in the work to get the skills to pay the bills that enable you to pay for your current living situation, your bills, and your wants and your needs. And in addition to that, you're able to put together cash to slap down to get the kind of house that you want without PMI, private mortgage insurance. You don't fall into the categories of people who pay PMI. You know, there are typically three types of people that do fall into that category. Folks that are urgent or socially motivated buyers. This includes individuals who feel an immediate need to purchase a home for whatever reason. You know, it could stem from societal pressures, deeming apartment living is undesirable. Maybe you're the type of individual who has roommates and you want to end that situation. Maybe you just need more space due to the fact that you're starting a family. Now these are all valid reasons by the way, but if you're motivated by that kind of thing, the financial follow can be significant. And of course we're gonna go over that more in a few minutes. But if you're the kind of buyer, you may not be financially prepared for other homeownership costs, leading you to financial strain. A situation that a lot of folks call house poor. Saving up for a large down payment could alleviate the burden of PMI and provide a more stable financial footing, allowing you to invest in the future with less financial stress. The other type of buyer who lacks the discipline to avoid PMI. While they consist of individuals who believe that homeownership is a necessary step in their personal or financial growth. For whatever reason, they're influenced by societal norms. And once they've reached a certain economic level, you know, something like getting a nice job, you just feel compelled to buy a house as a status symbol or a marker of success. Now, this approach has a number of problems. Namely, it can just lead to a premature purchase with inadequate down payments, leading for the need to get private mortgage insurance. Now, the financial implications, we've talked about them a little bit, but they're just the PMI in this situation, in other situations, right? It's sort of just the beginning of the additional costs that are gonna compound against you in the long term. Things like higher interest payments, longer path to building equity, the sort of things that just make your financial situation compound against you, resulting in you being poorer than you typically should be. And then there are the people that just don't understand. I'm sure you've run into these individuals. Folks that just don't have a clear grasp of the impact of paying extra in interest, PMI, etc., on their finances don't really care, maybe they have more money than they know what to do with, and they just, or perhaps they haven't even thought through all the implications. Whatever it is, they just don't fully grasp how PMI coupled with the compounding effects of interest payments can significantly affect the total cost of the mortgage over time. Now this is the kind of thing that leads to more expensive and extended mortgage repayment periods. But if you're the type of person that's determined to yourself that I need to avoid paying PMI, then you have the determination at least, and more than likely, you have the smarts to save up for 20% for your down payment. But if that's the case, and you can save 20%, you should have the capability to save up the other four-fifths of the transaction. I know what you're thinking, where to come up with that number? Simple math, folks. 20% is one-fifth of 100%. Four-fifths of 100% is the rest of the amount of money to save up. The only thing is, it's gonna take a little bit of sacrifice from you. But if you've already determined to yourself to make that sacrifice, technically speaking, you could go the whole way. Start with harnessing the power of compound interest. Now, saving for a house using interest-bearing accounts, like high-yield savings accounts or CDs, certificates of deposit, well, they can significantly accelerate the savings process. I'm a fan of these sort of techniques, utilizing compound interest in my favor instead of against me. You see, interest earns additional interest and that can exponentially grow your savings over time. 
By reinvesting the interest earned, you can benefit from a higher effective yield. This is in contrast to paying off a mortgage early. You see, when you're paying off a mortgage, you're already obligated to pay some amount of interest. And even paying it off early, well, your initial payments go towards interest rather than principal, particularly early in the mortgage. In addition to that, you can use techniques like CD ladders, which involve investing in multiple CDs with staggered maturity dates. Now, this strategy provides both higher interest rates than regular savings accounts and the flexibility to reinvest as each CD matures. In a rising interest rate environment, this approach allows one to take advantage of higher rates over time, accumulating your savings faster. Now, unlike with mortgages, which are a long-term commitment with set payments. CD ladders offer the ability to adjust one's investment strategy as financial situations or market conditions change. It's a similar scenario with bond ladders. Now, certificates of deposits and bonds are treated differently for tax purposes. So you want to keep that in mind because uh, obviously Uncle Sam is very interested in your tax situation. Just be aware of that. But bond ladders consist of bonds with different maturity dates, similar to CD ladders. The key here is that bonds tend to have better returns than your typical CD. And investing in bonds and keep reinvesting the returns of those bonds helps to grow your savings or investments without the risks associated with the stock market by reinvesting the returns from these bonds you can grow your savings steadily and in a predictable and stable fashion. So those are just a couple of ways that you could save up, not only just for the down payment of your house, but for the entire cost of the house. And as I'm sure you know, saving up and paying cash for a house helps you to avoid substantial interest payments that come with a mortgage. Over the course of a 30 year mortgage, homeowners could end up paying almost double the home's original value due to interest. If you were to use saving strategies that yield you interest, you as that saver are on the receiving end of interest payments which can significantly reduce the time needed to save for a house. And of course, achieving full homeownership without a mortgage translates into immediate equity and financial security. This approach eliminates the risk of foreclosure. It reduces monthly living expenses and provides a solid asset base. As a matter of fact, it allows for greater financial freedom and flexibility, since the funds that would have gone towards a mortgage payment can now be redirected towards other investments or saving goals. Someone with the cache to walk into any home buying situation and slap down cash and say, I'll take that house tomorrow. That's the kind of individual that commands a market in any home buying situation. And now you know that smart saving and use of financial strategies like CD ladders, high yield savings accounts, and bond ladders will help you to avoid PMI and to give you the capacity and capability to be an all cash buyer. But you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's gonna kinda take a while to save up all that cash for a home. Even if I use some of these advanced strategies. And in many ways, you're right. It will take a while, but maybe not as long as you think. Just a quick example for you. If you, through diligence and using saving techniques like the ones I described above, took about two years to save up the amount of money that you need to avoid paying PMI, that's again, one fifth of the amount of money that you need to own the house. You can then multiply that two years by five. So instead of owning that house right away, you would own that house after a 10 year period. Keeping in mind again that you have the capability to save up that 20%. If you have the capability to save up 20% for the house that you want to avoid PMI after a two year period, you now have the capability to own a house in 10 years. Whereas if you had a 15 year mortgage, you would have owned it in 15 years and you would avoid all the interest and fees associated with trying to get that house in 15 years immediately instead of taking the time to save up over those 10 years. Now that's probably an extreme example, for sure. It might take you three years to save a PMI. 20% to get that same house, three year period, right? Take that same amount of time, multiply it by five, 15 years. So if it took you three, takes you three years to own a house while avoiding PMI, it would take you the same amount of time to have a 15 year mortgage to own that house with 100% equity. Maybe it takes you four years. Perhaps it takes you four years to save up all the amount of money that you need to avoid PMI. Again, four times five. That's gonna be 20 years have ownership of the house in full, which is gonna be less than a 30 year mortgage. While again, saving you significant amount of money on interest. Keeping in mind that a 30 year mortgage, if not paid off early, can and in a lot of cases does double the amount of money that you pay for the house in terms of interest. So it's definitely worth considering at the very least. If I can save up 20%, if you can save up 20% to avoid paying PMI, you should use that same discipline, that same knowledge of saving and investing to then take the next logical step and avoid paying 
a mortgage altogether, saving yourself interest, saving yourself fees, etc. Take a look at the video you see on the screen right now to get an idea of why buying a house may not be all it's cracked up to be, particularly in today's culture. And like, subscribe, click the notification bell, and remember that a goal without plan is a wish, a goal without plan and no action is a wish list. Derek West, Binance Squared. I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm out of here. Peace.